Hello everyone and welcome to the video. We have an exciting one for you. I am here with Matt, our uh, our custom guy. He does our custom combining and he just uh, finished up our corn here a couple minutes ago. And uh, if you haven't seen that, make sure to go watch that video. But we decided we're gonna do a video just on the combine. And he's gonna walk us through the combine, maybe teach us a little something. I'm super maybe. excited. Maybe he'll learn something looking at your guys' comments. But yeah. uh, but anyways, so you've been doing this now for three years, you said? Yeah, just this is going on my third year, so. You also do a little trucking on the side? A little and... bit of trucking, yeah. I got, just got into that uh, April boat. Super into working in the shop in the winter, fixing yeah. stuff, a little, little bit of everything. So. A little bit of everything. Can't so, stand a normal jab. So. Yeah, yeah. Once you start farming, you don't ever get out of it. Amen to that. I'm trying, I'm trying to get into that. <laughs> but anyways, we're gonna walk through your combine. Your combine's an international... It's a 1460. What year? It's a 1981 model. All right, so we're gonna go uh, now to the, the beaters in the back. So starting here, you got your rolls that suck the corn through. It's kind of just like a big screw sucks them into your uh, knives that pull it through your stripper plates here. As you can see, these ones are new. Nine times out of 10, these are wore out on your old combines. Not too terrible, too expensive, so I don't know why they're always wore out, but they are. If you've seen in the last video, this, this row is giving me issues, and the wider you go, the more material you can get through, through the area. But the wider you go, the more chance you got at shelling like this. Yeah, and header loss, yeah. which, you, which you don't want. No. Which, it's a happy medium. And then you got your gathering chains that just pull the cobs up to your rear auger. And you got your auger, takes it into your feeder house back there. And this is a, a four row wide head. Yep. He had to a, get a, a special head just for us and our uncle. So yep. he'd be the only guys around here doing it. Yep. Yep. How hard was it to find this head? Uh, not that hard, surprising. Uh, my six row is a series newer. This is a 944. There are little differences here and there, but they're cheap too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no one wants them. I, it came out of oh, just bullet else. Okay. okay. And are some of the parts the same, like the gathering chains and stuff? The gathering chains, uh, the stripper plates I was just showing you there, and the gearbox is underneath. But otherwise, the only difference is, is the rolls are greasable. On the new style, they're a water pump bearing where they oh. get oiled by the gearbox. Oh, okay. So everything's like, sealed. Okay. Yep. So you don't have to maintain them as much. So. Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah. At least if you had problems, you can steal parts off one or the other. Or... Yeah, yeah. I mean, for the price that I paid for it, you can't even touch the gearboxes. So, you know, oh. easy parts right there. We'll move back into the feeder house. Can't really open it up to see much. But if you stick the camera in there, you got your get a uh, feeder hose chain and it'll bring it in into the rotor up front there on the bottom. You should be able to go underneath. From the rotor. This is a like a rock trap, correct? Uh, right. This one does not have a rock trap. This is where a rock trap would be. Okay. So this you, is just a clean out door. So that would be kind of like an add-on or this um, series you can't? This series, some of them did have them, but you'd have to change the whole feeder house. Okay. Because they're longer to accommodate the rock trap. Oh. I looked into it, but it's so hard to try to find every part. Just you got to really watch when you're going through beans because when you're on a rock, you grit your teeth pretty hard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the camera can see it pretty. You can just see into the elephant ears here and we got these uh bars just the rotor is just a big screw and it just funnels the corn into the concaves back there which we'll show you later and right here is one of the rasp bars can't really see it but that helps chew up the cob and corn this one ain't too wore out it's getting there but no holes yet so before I forget, since we were talking about a rotor, that brings the question, why did you choose a red combine versus the green combine from this era? Uh, for one, the red ones are cheaper because you don't have the side hill. If you ever seen those, they, the green ones, you gotta have them flat to the contour of the ground because mm -hmm. they're not a rotor style. They're a rasp bar style. And it's a, it's a walker. So yeah, those are a walker style. This is completely different. Yep. That's where a guy can get away with it a little bit in the side hills here. There's some things that I did to it that makes it a little better in the hills and you still slow down, but these are a little better in the beans. They don't grumble as hard in the green stems, so. Speaking of hillside add-ons, let's uh, talk a little more about that. What this combine would have versus a normal 1460 from a flat farm. Well, for one, this one has four wheel drive. They called this mud hog back when you bought these. This is a add-on there. And then you look in here on the sieves, we got dividers. We got three dividers across the whole sieves. So when you're on the side hill, the grain stays in each section. Otherwise you will get corn running to one side 
and I'll be running out the back because you ain't using the full surface area of the combine. And then just so you can see the tip of it, we got a diverter plate in here and this covers up two of the augers on the other side to divert the grain more evenly. These combines, the way the rotor spins, they shell more to one side than the other and it really amplifies that when you're on the side hills and you'll only be able to go faster one way to the other. So this kind of evens that out. Back to the path we were on, elephant ears, front of the rotor, and then the rotor keeps going here. Yep, you see these grates here, we got concaves here and here. These ones are a little different than these. These got a bigger opening in them. And this is what chews the cob up. It squeezes the cob on the inside of the grates and it'll shell the corn into this auger bed. And when you're setting these combines up, if you're getting broken cobs, this one's just broken, but you should be getting full length cobs out the combine. And if they're getting more chewed up and you're getting pieces, one of two things. One, your rotor, your concaves are set too tight against the rotor and it's chewing more of it up. You'll see uh, chewed up more, corn. More friction, yeah. Yeah, you'll see more chewed up corn in the tank and you'll see chewed up cobs in the field. And you can loosen your uh, concaves up, make it wider for the gap. With this, there's usually a gauge here, but the plates are out. Or you can slow the rotor down. It's a big guessing game. You learn. Yeah, play play with it. Play lot. with it, yes. And get it all dialed in. And then talking about concaves, is this your only set of concaves, or do you have like a bean set? Uh, or, uh... This this set will do corn and beans. Okay. And I don't know if you can see very well, but there is wires in these concaves. Every other wire is in there, there's holes. And you can put more wires in there for like uh, your smaller grain stuff. Okay. They do make smaller concaves. I don't know if I could get through wheat or nothing like that with this. Because okay. you'll have to change the sieves out. Okay. Because the fingers are smaller. I don't know. Good question. Yeah. So I've if, never done. So if any of you watching that have a combine like this and that do corn and soybeans and small grains, maybe leave some comments down yeah, below what you, you got to do. If you can get away with because I do have the extra wires to put in here. Okay. I just, I never have. So maybe one of one of your viewers know. What you got to do. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. They'll know what you can get away with or not. And then towards the rear of the combine, we can, we can get up in there. We can look take a look at the sieves. But before that, we got our beauties here. They spread uh, out the bedding, tries to be evenly across the field. Beans, not so great. And they make more kits, so you have two discs below. That's what I was about to ask, if there's different variations here. And is that something you can disable too if you wanted to windrow it behind yourself? Yeah, you, you pull the pin here, you can pull the beaters right off. Oh, okay. So yeah, I've never windrow like bean bedding or nothing like that. I guess we don't really do that. Okay, yeah. yeah, but if you had to get in the small grains, that maybe would be something you wanted to do. Yeah, I would like to try it, but I know small grain is... It's a lot of material for nothing in the tank. Yeah, me and him were talking. You may have seen our other videos where we had a green combine here eating our oats. And this year probably would have been a good thing for an older combine like this because it was nice and dry. Yeah. But the year before, green as could be because it's new seeding. Yeah. And so it'd be a battle for something Cause older. He, yeah, because that, that green stuff don't compress and she really chews. It, it sucks a lot of power with that. So. And uh, speaking of that and potentially plugging, have you ever plugged this combine? I haven't yet. No. And if you I, if you were gonna plug, do you think you know where that would be? Yeah, actually. Up here, for some reason, they got the wrench story. You got a big wrench sitting there on these holders, with a big socket on it. And this being a rotor combine, I can show you later, but you go up in the engine bay where the rotor comes in, and you put that wrench on the back of the rotor and you turn it backwards. Most of them nowadays have reversers. That's something I don't want to do. Yeah, you're going to take it slow. I bet you that'll be a three-hour ordeal. <laughs> I have caught rocks in the feeder house. This one has got a stone retarder in it. All it does is it kind of hides the feeder house chain a little bit, and you okay. can run it lower to the feeder house floor, and you can set stops on it so when you get you know a fist-sized rock, it'll go up and it'll jam. Oh, okay. Instead but, of breaking something. Unless, yeah, so you don't run it through and through the rotor. When you do run one through there, yeah, you grit your teeth. and. <laughs> And then it'll go down on your sieves and bounce across your sieves and it's just something oh, nice. you don't want. Yeah. That's why new one's got rock traps. Yeah, we'll crawl up in here and we'll hopefully you guys can see the food. So then we got our upper sieve here. This is your first main sieve. You set it to where you just got, you're not getting nothing out the back, but you're not getting any cob in the tank. I usually go off of my fingers, whatever that is, half inch or so. And then there's a lower sieve just below this one. You get in through here. And that one's got less surface area, but that one in corn, you set it wide open. Your top sieve's really the only thing doing anything. But in beans, 
your lower sieve, you tighten that up like a quarter inch or so, I believe. And then you tighten this one up as well, because there's a lot more trash you bring in from the head with these. And then you can see our, my diverters in here. And you can see how that would keep the grain centered. So a, a flatland combine wouldn't need it or necessarily wouldn't have those. Yeah, a flatland combine would not have these. Mine didn't have it when I bought it. I had to put them in because this came out of uh, Baldwin. And you can see this would be your uh, stock chopper up here for beans. You got knives in there and there's normally knives that come out from underneath up into those slots up there. But it's pulled out. Just behind that is the uh, rear end of the rotor. And all your material will come out of there, all your like cobs and husk or beans, yep. all your stems, and it'll chew it up so it's easier to plow through. So that's kind of the threshing aspect okay. of this combine. And before we jump away from that, you mentioned how you bought it from, was there other things you had to do? Like were there things broke that uh, No, it was parts? a older retired farm they're just getting out of it and the only thing i did was it to get it to work in the side was those diverters and i had a couple breakdowns last year but nothing too major okay like are there any common bearings that seem to go out on these from your experience so far i had a feeder house roll bearing go okay. out. so far that's i've been having really good luck so far this and when you come over to this side of the combine you get your uh grain elevator we got a clean grain elevator and we got a recirculating elevator. This elevator, clean grain, takes it up to the top of the tank. This recirculating elevator is under the top sieve. So any of the trash that comes off that top sieve that doesn't make it through the lower sieve gets augered into this elevator and it goes back up into the throat of the rotor to okay. try again. Yeah. It gets chewed up more. It gets a little more efficient that way. You don't have to tighten your top sieve and you can go a little faster. I'm sure is the theory behind it. You can uh, climb to the top next, I suppose. Yeah, let's do that. Let's check out the engine and, uh, and the grain tank up there. Starting off, do you know what type of engine's in these combines? This one in uh, 1460 is a DT436. So in the bigger series, like a 1480, just, just a little bit bigger, that's got a 4... 66 like in your tractors how many horse would that be i believe these are right around 200. okay and is that something and then that's something if you wanted to could you tune these up you can a lot of people do do it you get like uh you can get an eight road head for these you only really lose power in beans where you're really chewing and yeah you can turn them up yeah. i haven't seen the need for it yet but since you mentioned that an eight row on this do they sell like weight brackets for that axle or something? Because I imagine that get kind of heavy. Out there. You would you would think because this thing gets pretty light, full tank of grain on a hill, and you're backing up, you can feel it get pretty light. I don't know if they make weights, but I'm sure there's something out there. Yeah, maybe these guys know if there's a weight kit for that. You usually see it on like those older 4400 John Deere's. Yeah, that's they what hang I've seen weights. Them. Yeah, but this has got the four wheel drive, which is a little heavier. Okay. I was talking about that big wrench earlier down on the feeder house. Not underneath here, just like this one on that rotor. Okay, so that's the end of your rotor, right? Yep. And then you're driving it off all these, these pulleys and belts here? Yep. You got your rotor here, and you got your drive, it goes through a gearbox, chopper, you got to run a belt down to the chopper. And it goes to this, be like the PTO box, just under your feet. I had this all apart this summer, because that would be your transmission pto box and i had to take this all out because the input seal was leaking not a fun job mm -mm. <laughs> but the older uh 715 combines i believe that's the series of them they actually had a pto like a 1066 tractor oh cool and those had issues going out okay so this one's hydraulic cylinder just a belt you got the cylinder that tightens the belt and that's how it starts this one okay. since we're talking about ptos and all that so this is a, a hydro machine correct? yes that's what they would classify this at i know on the deer side there were some that were like partial hydros where they had like actual gears was there that version for uh, this one does have gears okay so you got the hydro here and then you can change the speeds in the transmission which road gear is out on this one currently fun thing to find out this fall okay and you were kind of talking about in the cab with me so you want to tell these guys what your plan was with that uh, we're gonna see how hard it is to take it out. There's a used junkyard, uh, Allstate Egg Parts. I'm gonna try to get a price on that. I don't know how easy it's gonna be to get out there. It's from what I've been reading online, maybe some more people know, bearings get sloppy in there. It just said it won't go in gear. I've okay. checked all the linkage and- Yeah, so, see, so hopefully that goes well. Maybe hopefully. we'll maybe we'll hear about that next year, how maybe. that went. Who knows? This machine's got 4,600 hours on it. You usually can tell uh, hours by how much paint to wear off in the grain tank. 1460s did not come with this foot section extension. This is kind of a homemade deal. 
Okay. And this is factory. And then you get into like 1440s and 1420s, they won't even have any of these. Final drives are lighter. That's one of the downfalls of some of these combines, those final drives. That's downfall of combines. Yeah. They'll crack off. You could add all the capacity you want up here for your clean grain tank, yep. but, but then you're just putting stress on your drivetrain. Yeah. You see it all the time on, like, I'm in Facebook groups with this combine. And you see them where that tire's popped out, and usually it's on a side hill on the wrong side. And yeah, not a good situation, that's no. for sure. Do you say how many bushel you think you can hold in this? Rough On a flat land, you can get almost 200 in from factory it's like 180 with lower extension when filling my truck that's kind of what kind of what i figured it out to be you were talking paint and hours you said how many hours are on this machine 4600 4, what have you seen through your research that these combines have gotten up to 6000 hours is a lot of hours motor wise well that motor is running wide open all the time yep. you know it's never idling it's never you know partial throttle it's wide open and then you start getting there on that 5000 hours your auger beds below your clean out augers and especially that auger bend bowl, that rotor, those will get holes in them. And your augers, your uh, flighting will get thin. I don't know if you can see it down there by the corner, that one. They, they're not, they're getting to a yeah, knife edge there. So. Start replacing all that, and then your bearings and bushings and all Chain, that chains, stuff. yeah. This machine is a electric over hydraulic in the older series, which would be the same series, just like, you know, like a 79, 78. They'd be a twin stick, so you'd have to lift the head with a stick. Oh. And uh, you, your speed would be different. Okay. This one, it's all on one stick. We should get in the cab here. Yeah, we can take it And another common thing with these combines, being this one's got four-wheel drive, the rear end's a lot uh, heavier duty. Ones you don't see with four-wheel drive, they're a lot skinnier in the rear end, and they just got those spindles like a tractor front end. Yep. No brake all the time. Very common thing with those. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. So as I mentioned, this one's electric over hydraulic, which means if it was a twin stick, is what they call it, there'd be two sticks here. One for your header control, one for your speed. This is all in one. You got your header control and there. And this one being electric over hydraulic has auto header for beans, which is really nice. So you don't have to sit there and babysit the head for height. Yep. You just flip that on and it'll follow the contour, which is really nice in these hills. Is there any way that would put like row sense in this thing or, uh, you know, like row feelers? Is that uh, even possible on something Not this in this. You can put the field tracker on it, which would, uh, the head would contour to the ground, being the combine would be leaning. Okay. Which, I've seen it done on the uh, 16 series. I don't know about the 14 series. Okay. Because that's a whole lot of hydraulic add-on. I was okay. talking about rotor speed earlier. This one being electric over hydraulic, you can, can do it from the cab. Normally there would be a big, it'd look like a wing nut to adjust the speed. Okay. And same with the fan, there would be a big wing nut. This one's electric over hydraulic, so you can do it from in the cab. And most of these won't have this knob. This is your four wheel drive. Well, that's nice going down the road, you can kick it out. And being with electrical hydraulic, you got all your electric switches for your reel when you're doing beans and your speed and all that. Okay. Which is real nice to be able to do it on the fly. You don't have to stop and you can save time. So, speaking of that, um, being in the cab showing us the controls, what are you doing? At the start of the year, when you show up to your first field, what are you doing in the cab here and to get your machine set? Normally, first thing I do is high moisture for the home place there. And the combine will be set up for dry corn getting put away. And usually, the only thing for high moisture you change, you tighten the rotor up so you get a little chewed up uh, cob. Because okay. for high moisture, you can put a little cob in there. And you open the sieves up more so okay. the cob will come in the tank. Okay. And usually from high moisture, we'll go into beans, which there's the big jump. That's where you gotta adjust that retarder drum. Because with corn, you know, the cobs are bigger. Bigger material coming through. Yeah, yeah. And then you gotta adjust your concaves, your sieves. You gotta put the rotor into high gear. In low gear, your rotor is only spinning about 400 RPM, but beans is 600, so. Okay, and you can't do that on the fly in here, or you gotta do it? Uh, you can change the speed in here, but not the... Low to high. Yeah, low to high is a big gearbox out there. Okay. Which that's, you know, you just change it when you change it. So since we were talking about going corn to beans, what do you got to do to switch out heads on an older combine like this? What's your process looking like? A lot simpler than new heads being. There's not as many wires. So here you got your, be your PTO shaft. You pull that off. And then there's two locks that hold the head on. Okay. You undo those locks 
ain't gonna set it down. Really? Okay. Did you have to adjust your um, your shoot going to your feeder house? I know some heads you see they got like spacers in there. No, being all my heads are for this series of combine, I don't have to. Okay. Getting to the end of the the combine tour here. Do you have a wish list of parts for this? Bigger one. Bigger one. Yeah. Yeah. This is a 1460. I would like uh, a 1680 or a 1666. Okay. Which a 1660 would be the same thing as this is a series newer. Yep. The 66 had longer sieves in it. A little bigger. A little bigger capacity and I think I could get a little more speed on the hills with more sieve surface. Ideally. It would be nice to have a hillside but those aren't cheap compared to this. So know. on these old ones, did they? can you put a hillco system on this or did they not make it that? Actually, uh, out in Washington where they do all that wheat on those really steep, really steep hills. You check yep. that out on the video. They, they would have a 1470. Those things are crazy because they will contour up to like 36 degrees. Oh wow! And they're they're nuts. And it's all hydraulic, probably. Yeah, right? all hydraulic. Oh, I don't think we touched on your your auger. Uh, can you get extensions for that if you wanted to? Could if you... I wanted it longer? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you can buy uh, just where it unbolts there. You can buy another six foot chunk or whatever. Since we're looking up there, I like the flag. That was a great. Great touch. Yeah, that was something I did, I think, the second year I bought it. So Yeah, it really stands out having that on there. There was a tire company running a promotion. If you took a picture and put it on Instagram, you got a flag. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. That's great. Love that. I think we touched everything. A couple chains and stuff for the unload auger, if that's something you want to look into. For the unload auger, there's a lever on the inside, just a manual lever by the seat. And that'll tighten this belt. You can see it's really loose. It'll tighten that up. And it'll start running these chains here. And these two sprockets are your uh, augers on the auger bed. And if you look under here, this is for your vertical auger drive. Now on like the newer, uh, like 85 model 1460s, this will be a gearbox, not these open exposed gears, because these wear out and then there won't be bushings in here. This is something you grease every day. Now, since we're talking about that, maintenance wise, how often are you greasing the, the whole combo? So that's like a daily thing. For yep. It? That, that's like a daily thing and they do have charts throughout the combine some things i really do touch on because when they wear out they suck to replace for your sieves that shake back and forth we got bushings here that you can grease okay and then your steering i usually touch every day being it's so steep and you're always turning around messing around yeah especially in this part of the world you're turning a lot more than most places yes and then uh for your swing out auger up top there's a grease bank up there for the snout and then with this head the rolls these ones are greasable. Those are something you touch every day. Moving pretty fast. Yeah. Any other things you want to touch on or you think you kind of covered? I think I touched most of it. If you guys have any questions, make sure to leave them down in the comments. Yeah. Any uh, insight or recommendations for increasing longevity or things to do or change, especially yeah. in uh, this part of the world with the hillsides? With the hillside, yeah. If there's any other tricks or something you can do to get it a little better and or them small Hills. grains like we were touching on. If you yeah. guys know anything there, let us know down in the comments. Big thank you to you, Matt, for yeah. coming out, harvesting our corn for us, finishing up that, and uh, letting us video the combine. This is great. Yeah. I know I learned something. Thanks for putting in the time to do that. Hopefully these guys learn something, and hopefully we learn a little something from the I'm comments sure I'll as learn well. I'm sure something, man. That's going to be it. Thank you all for watching. Thanks to Matt. Uh, make sure to check out our other harvest videos if you haven't already, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.